Dan for in line with advance in communication technology, we are increasingly hearing the term global village. The world community is getting easier to communicate with each other like in village. The existence of free trade areas or free trade zones, such as the Asian Community 2015 uh, CAFTA, AFTA, and the other require us to be able to compete with other countries. All parties agree that the fields of education has a very large role in the development of the nation, especially economic development. In the context of economic development, the role of formal education is very visible. If we are able to improve the level of education, then Indonesia will automatically be able to compete in all fields with other countries. This competition with other countries, of course, also applies in the world of universities. Universities in Indonesia, as one of the tribe of the national development, are responsible for producing graduates who have deep and broad insights and skills both locally, nationally, and internationally, and are able to compete with graduates from other countries' universities. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, to improve the competitiveness of Indonesian universities with foreign universities, we need to seriously consider improving the quality of universities. One way to improve the quality of this higher education institution can be achieved more quickly is to establish cooperation with foreign universities that have a good reputation. Higher education internationalization is defined as a process in universities that integrates international components into the objective functions or delivery of education, including curriculum development and innovation, lecture and student exchange, development and expansion of study program, utilization of technological assistance for learning, cultural training, education for international in, uh, students and research co-publication. Next, ladies and gentlemen, Vidya Vardhaka College of Engineering is a private university in India with the visiting lecture from Vidya Vardhaka College of Engineering to Stecom University is a form of commitment to the implementation of the three dharma of higher education and also cooperation for LPPM and LPMI institution. This is done because it is a necessity to prepare and improve quality lecture at Stecom University, in particular, and both parties in general. Oh, and at the moment, it is cooperation agreement between the two parties in various fields. Next, academic research study opportunities, student exchange, short-term and long-term faculty exchange, delegation visit, and the other mutually agreed activities or programs. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, I would like to my appreciation the International Affairs Organization of Stecom University and Vidya Vardhaka College of Engineering for making this international relationship. I hope this collaboration can run well and good communication can be established. Okay, thank you, Ms. Novita. Please continue. Okay, thank you for Mr. Ahmad. And then we have speaker from Vidya Vardhaka College of Engineering, Dr. Soma Sekar Yusef, as Associate Professor, Department of Business Administration with a topic Marketing Management and Operation. Yeah, for Dr. Soma Sekar, you can start for this session. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to thank um, our college management, Vidyavardhaka Sangha, and 
our department head professor balaji rao and the management for providing this opportunity to share my experience and knowledge in this excellent international forum and also i am happy to see that this type of the collaborations among the international universities are helping the institutes to grow each other and also know across the countries how the education is developing and the creating the awareness is also building a good relationship among the universities so it's a good initiative and i congratulate the tescom university uh, sorry stecom university for uh, associating with the vidyavardhaka and i uh, hope i expecting a long journey in this education pattern so i'm going to start sharing my screen madam novita is it visible my ppt is visible yes we can see our presentation yes thank you thank you sir so once again good afternoon to everyone uh, myself dr somshekar ic Uh, working as an associate professor in the Department of Business Administration, Vidyavardhaka College of Engineering, Mysore, Karnataka, India. My major area of interest is marketing and supply chain management. Particularly today, it's uh, I am going to discuss on the marketing analytics, where today we can see that marketing analytics is growing like a, a huge, um, we can say with the huge opportunities for the companies. to understand their situations to understand their the future possibilities and even to know that how best they can improve in the industry across the global for that they need to understand whatever the marketing activities we are carrying and how they were measured because today we know that companies are investing crores together millions together for marketing their products and services to the market to the industry ultimately the marketing it says that how best you are going to market or convince the customers understand the customers and make them to see that what actually they required so for the companies are using various the marketing strategies like product strategies pricing strategies promotion strategies distribution strategies and even when it comes with the service sector extended with the people strategies and even the physical evidence strategies so like that they are using the various types of the marketing strategies to convince to under first they to try to understand the customers and their customers and apply a specific right strategy so that they can purchase the products and services of the organizations but the job is not ends with going with only with marketing every time whenever a company invests some money it always looks on roi that is return on investment if the return on investment is not proper then companies will start taking a review on their investments so they look on that where we went wrong are we in the right path are we with the right promotions are we with the right distribution strategies are you reaching the customers with the right time the right place so like that various questions will come where they start evaluating and reviewing their marketing strategies and that way they starts measuring their efforts their promotion or the strategies efforts they try to measuring and that measurement becomes say typical for a companies so how we are going to measure those so in such cases the role of the data will come the role of data means so how companies are investing with the proper database like whatever the investments they do in terms of man machine material money and even the efforts and even the outsourcing even with the research data collection so whatever they do so everywhere okay they need to make invest the money they need to see that how much they invested 
and all those will be evaluated with the proper statistical tools with the proper research methods so in that way this marketing analytics is counts its own value today in the industry so let us welcome i will welcome you all to this marketing analytics world and today my objective is to discuss that how this marketing analytics is playing its key role in the industry what are the different domains and also what are the different the dimensions of use of the marketing analytics so where they are actually applied in the with respect to the marketing strategies and followed by a hands on session means where i'll give the demo on using the softwares like the solver like spss so with that so i try to start and go with the two or three case studies so marketing analytics is the practice of measuring managing and analyzing marketing performance to maximize its effectiveness and optimize return on investments so that way so any marketing you say that it is going with the one way of a one way approach but analytics it is measuring and managing the analyzing the marketing performance because every marketing performance involves the as i said man machine material money so in that way they see that what is the roi if they have 100 employees what is the input what is the uh, roi of the 100 employees efforts are they investing 1 billion crores so what is the output and also roi of that amount invested so in that way understanding marketing analytics it allows marketers to be more efficient at their jobs and minimize wasted web marketing dollars so that's the way so marketing analytics is having its own role in the industry so ultimately all these the calculations we do all these research methodology or we do use the using the the techniques with the help of the software so all are supporting ultimately helps to optimize return on investments for the companies to check with this how companies are using this marketing analytics in the industry so you can see this uh, the chart talks about the percentage of companies using marketing analytics for the activities followed by with the vertically you can see the various activities various areas where companies are approaching this marketing analytics and also they are implementing and among them so which one they give the more priority which activity will be given more priority the ranking base it was mentioned here so every company always they want to grow and for that they come up with the various marketing activities so they the first job is they invest on promoting the customers creating awareness among the customers creating impulse in the customers so there comes the role of the customers acquisition you can see that the customer acquisition okay this is the company is using the market analytics for this activity that is around 36.6 percentage for the customers acquisition where they try to assess that how best they are going to acquire the customers whatever they invested what is the return on investments means how many customers were retained how many leads were generated and how many of them purchased with the proper volume and what is the potential business or the future business companies can expect after acquiring the customers so there comes with the customer acquisition marketing mix so as a marketing mix in terms of the the four pillar there is the product price place promotion strategies are you with the services related with the seven p's physical evidence and the people strategies so that way you can see that investments are at the percentage of activities involved with respect to marketing mix is 31.5% where the customer retention it's around 30 30.7% social media 30.7% for segmenting so every company is going to segment their market to see that which segment is more potential are we investing equal in all the segments or are we getting the potential segments so that can be analyzed for target in the right segments you want the promotion strategies branding pricing strategies product or service strategy new product or service development or even multi channel marketing you can see that 
So companies are involving one or the other way in all types of the the marketing activities they carried to improve their overall business, improve their market share, and also analyzing those with the specific. The least is with the multi-channel marketing. Multi-channel marketing means the companies are focusing on more than one channels to market their products. Maybe they are promoting. Now among them again, they have to check that. Which channel is more potential? Many of the times, companies are investing on the online, online marketing. Whether its cost is more compared to the traditional investment, traditional marketing investments, traditional channel. Which one has to be preferred more? So that way, so companies are focusing on more on multi-channel marketing. We have to analyze that which channel is more important. When it comes to new product or service development. Every company to expand their market share or to attract the customers or retain the customers, they are the continuous process. That is by offering the new products to the customers and even <coughs> a new services or continuation the services. If they are not maintaining the continuation the services, definitely customers will switch to the another brand. That's what <coughs> the companies what they invested in the new product or service development. They are going to evaluate with the proper marketing analytics. <coughs> Excuse me. Then pricing strategy. If you take pricing strategies, most of the companies are focusing on the different pricing strategies, like whether we should go with the skimming or with the penetration or with the price bundle. So like that, various strategies they are using. So the investments on those will be again evaluated and reviewed by the companies. That way, so this. Structure is giving us idea that how companies are using these marketing analytics in the different domains. To focus on this, one minute. When we focus on this diagram, okay, where it is showing that. Whatever the sectors, okay, are now approaching marketing analytics. You can see that horizontally, marketing analytics value to drive potential growth in and also marketing analytics. You can see that the various areas where this marketing analytics were approached. So these figures are determined by industry averages, transaction intensity. Volume of analytics data. This per company it was taken. You can see that each bubble is showing with the manufacturing, with the utilities, with the information, the financial services and insurance, when the wholesale trade, real estate and rental, and even with the retail trade, accommodation and food, education and services. So like that. We can see that the companies are okay. The companies are whatever they are using. Just one minute. Yeah, just one minute, madam. Yeah. 
uh, due to some network error. Okay, I'm just uh, holding this. One minute, madam. Sure. Yes, madam. Now it's audible, madam. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Now, if we take this uh, example of this uh, the structure, so it is showing us that how this uh, the different sectors were using this marketing analytics, which is just like analyzing the data and focusing on the improving the efficiency of the results. So I hope this is giving the idea that so where all these analytics were approached and it was analyzed. We we'll take about this marketing analytics in this. So what are different ways this marketing analytics can be approached and it was used in the industry with the various tools, the statistical analysis that can be measured with the various marketing analytics tools we can say. So slide is showing about the various tools which are focused, which are giving us idea that whatever tools we can use and which way we can approach uh, these uh, particular, the statistical tools. Now, if you see that about the forecasting, so forecasting is like predicting the future and how companies are performing based on the historical data. And even companies are looking on that, how we can predict the possible benefits for the industry. And even in that industry, what is my, the cake, that is the, how much share I can enjoy with the proper predictions. That's comes with the forecasting, then comes with the pricing analytics, then analyzing customers' preferences, analytics in retailing, analytics in advertising and promotion, customer profitability, web analytics, social listening and analytics, and even which counts about the social media analytics. So like that, we can see the various types of this the applications with respect to this analytics. When you talk about the forecasting, so forecasting is like where companies are try to predict the future possibilities. Example, suppose Walmart is investing on a multiple promotions. It may invest on the employees, it may invest on the the pricing strategies, it may investing on the attracting the customers. Now they want to check that whatever we are doing the efforts, is it going to impact the sales or not? So they're going to impact the sales, then among them, which one is impacting? And before that, do they have proper association? And do they are giving the right analysis? That will be analyzed, that will be analyzed based on the, based on the, the company's initiatives and thorough analysis of the data. So in that way, so we can see that the various statistical tools were used under forecasting under the marketing analytics, that is correlation, multiple regression, ratio to moving average method, where correlation talks about the relationship existing between the variables. Example, like the sales with the, the employees efforts, because the employees efforts means the companies are investing to train the employees and make them to understand the customers, build a good relation with the customers and sell the products effectively. And 
whatever the inputs about the employees is collected by the researcher is it really supporting the existing or not that we analyze using the correlation similarly multiple regression where we can say that which is helping us to identify the impact impact of the independent variables on the dependent variable similarly in the organization as i said suppose walmart is investing on the employees training on the promotions and the pricing uh, pricing offers or even with advertisements on the different multi channels so which one is impacting more do they really impacting and what is the percentage of impact so this will be assessed with a tool called as the multiple regression which is called as a multivariate data analysis tool similarly ratio to moving average method so companies try to predict over a period of time what the sales were happening and how they will be measured and what the average sales can be predicted can be analyzed using the ratio to moving average method similarly another one that is the pricing analytics pricing analytics is talks about purely that is how the pricing strategies will be evaluated by the organizations they are focusing on the different pricing strategies and try to analyze those with the various approaches among them first one is optimizing the price take an example company is offering their products with a higher price or maybe lower price or at par with the competition that is called as a competitive parity so which one if they offer better so that they can attract the customers they can enhance their market share you know market share means is a total accumulation of all the players in the industry suppose in the retail industry if the companies example like tesco walmart or maybe big bazaar or maybe so what if we take that the pricing is like which is a very key pillar for the company every time they try to see on that what price i am offering in the market is it a right price or not if i am offering a higher price we know that companies go with the different pricing strategies like skimming pricing strategies or penetration pricing strategies with the skimming pricing strategies companies try to offer a higher price to the the products so that they can take the creamy layer of the business immediately and they can make the revenue as quickly as possible in the industry when they implemented the strategies we try to focus on the a small group of customers the market example like sony is offering a high premium televisions a sound systems electronic gadgets the premium uh, category of customers who able to uh, who are affordable to purchase those products where they will be having a small market share but they are getting their better business better revenue in time it all depends upon the company's objectives whereas some other companies we try to expand the market means acquire more market share as quickly as possible so for that 
they had to cover all category of the customers that means they go with the penetration pricing where they try to see that all product should be purchased by customers means it should be affordable to the customers so that way so they go with the higher price or lower price which one is attracted by the customers and is it offering with the right price or not that can be analyzed based on the the sales for that respective price if they keep the skimming price what is the unit sold what is the revenue they generated what is the future business they can expect and also the duration the time period is also very important so how much time is taken to sell these products you are the skimming or with the penetration they focus on the volume where the margin will be less for the companies but they focus on majorly the unit volume sold because they are offering affordable price means customers more customers will purchase the products even though with the less margin more volume so companies obviously getting the more profit than the expected marginal profit that way so companies are analyzing their the optimizing the price and strategies is it right are still modifications required then come with the another one is very important price bundling you see that companies to attract the customers as a part of marketing strategy they try to offer the combo product combo price you see the combo price where the customer purchases one product this is the price if they purchase another product along with this jointly they try to reduce the uh, the total of the price and they are offering some discount to the customers called as combo price or else they'll include some two three four uh, three to four items they bundle with the different price which are with the different prices suppose product a product b product c product d product e so all these five products with the different different prices and company wants to push their products in the market so that time is have a question that whether i should offer a combo of product a b c or b c d or c d e or again e a b so like that combination permutation combination will be made among the different combinations which best combination is giving the company the better revenue that way so companies whatever the initiatives they taken now they want to check that are they giving the right revenue for me or not am i getting the right whether i had done a right strategy right decision i made with the combination what i decided and offered in the market is it going is it uh, gaining a good business or not so this type of these things will be analyzed through the price bundling which is very common today in the industry because in the retail analytics where we can see okay, in the retail chain stores you can see that whenever you enter a shop immediately we see that companies are offering with the different combinations combo products combo price which are part of the price bundling and how this we analyze how the revenue can be calculated with the help of the analytics which is part of the pricing analytics is helping the companies revenue management revenue that is a profit what the company is generating so when the company is investing they try to see that what is the marginal profit they are getting even companies are deciding that should i stick on to a type a of margin or should i stick on to the type b of the margin or should i stick on to the type c of the margin level of profit so that they can manage the market they can get a good name in the industry they can get good they, they, they are enjoying the good sales in the market because when the company is sacrificing the revenue automatically the price of the product also reduce when the price was reduced so it links with the skimming sorry penetration or you can say the affordable price and customers rush to purchase the product products and that way so revenue can be enhanced 
so how much it is what percentage so this will be analyzed with the help of the revenue management that way so pricing analytics is very a key critical area where companies try to see that what cost okay they are incurring to generate the business even with the different pricing models even with the online marketing you can see that like pay per click different models were used by the companies the online where they were using the strategies like affiliate marketing the affiliate marketing we know that it's just like a market a platform online platform where the creator invites the companies invites the companies and it acts like a platform for both buyers and sellers and even when the sellers are not having the place to sell the products so they may use this the third parties the platforms to display their products and services best example you can see the amazon you can code as where amazon is using with this amazon affiliate program under that it is inviting the companies it is inviting them to display their products services in their websites and for each sales when customers purchase the products through amazon websites so amazon will be paid commission by the company because i am xyz company i don't have a i don't have a, a potential platform or potential website i don't know how to identify customers and where to sell my products the best strategy is i'll see a market where my pro, where i i can also sell products along with the competitors who are selling there so that i can push my product there so amazon is providing such type of the platforms where it is enjoying the commission based on the the number of units were sold are purchased by the by the customers so in that time they'll be enjoying the revenue so that way so companies are focusing on various type of pricing models and these models will be analyzed with respect to the revenue generated another area of the marketing analytics is that is analyzing the customer's preference we say in the market customer is a king yeah customer is a king when customers enters the market enters the shop he shows a variety of behavior may be rational behavior may be irrational behavior so when they purchase in the product the rational means like they think if i enter a shop if i see the displays i'll make a comparison i'll take my own time rationally i think that this product is worth for this price or the brand is good or is it offering the best features like that as a customer i am showing various behavior like rational behavior where i may purchase i may not purchase the decision is different even you you also all the participants who are here in this platform so you also may be experience when you visit a shop you will be doing a window shopping are you be going to purchase a product so that time you will be showing the both rational and irrational irrational behavior means like where you'll become impulse you'll be attracted by the company's promotions without knowledge without thought a single thought you purchase a product so i am telling this rational or irrational behavior is because every company wants to know that when customers are preferring the products when they are not preferring the products when they are purchasing my products when they are dropping to purchase the product in the buying behavior process or the purchase process at the end we have only two options purchase or not purchase 
and that depends on the behavior of the customer and the behavior is depends on various issue or can say various elements or various variables for example when you enter in the walmart shop so what happened so immediately you can see that you see a beautiful holdings were there colorful holdings were there boards were there with the attractive colors glittering by looking on that advertisement itself will make your mind that let me go and purchase the product first how beautiful it is or if you found there immediately in the entrance of the holdings if they mentioned so much discount 20% discount 30% discount 70% discount hangama sales end of the sales or festival season sales and which brand is offered with the highest discount so you start making mindset okay let me go and purchase that first that way so a decision of purchasing not purchasing it depends upon the various types of such elements or the variables or even sometimes you see that the employees are more tactic oriented more smart i can say not tactic more smart so these smart employees they know how to convince the customers they know the pulse of the customers they know when the customer started inquiring about the product on the shelf okay this guy is like that he is price sensitive he is brand sensitive he is volume sensitive he is benefit sensitive so like that they they start assessing the customer and as per that they know that how to convince and how to make him to purchase the product so this type of the behaviors are all influencing or impact in the customer's preference and that preferences are very important for marketers or the market researcher of the companies or research agencies to see that what type of the behavior among those behaviors what a behavior is highest when you give a rank among them and with the help of the analytics calculus data calculations so companies able to assess that okay this behavior is more preferred by the customers when they come to purchase this particular brand or my company brand company products so i had to seriously relook on this which can be used to enhance the sales or review the sales or take a measures to improve the business so that we can see here just examples i quoted here the chatsby tools use factor analysis also called as efa exploratory factor analysis a conjoint analysis mds that is multi dimensional scaling technique cluster analysis also called as a segment for particularly for segmentation or segmenting the customers or dividing the customers into different clusters <laughs> so that way so they can use all these strategies to identify the behavior of the customers particularly so that way you can see that factor analysis if you take i'll go to uh, show a demo of all these one by one factor analysis is used to see that just one minute yes sorry if we take factor analysis here suppose customers are expressing different behaviors 
So that time, using this factor analysis, we can identify that which variables are our common opinions are grouping together, and which are the common behaviors were expressed by the customers. So this can be identified with the help of the factor analysis technique. It's called the EFA, exploratory factor analysis, where suppose you ask some uh, uh, like um, 20 features, and you'll be asking the customers, please rate your priority, either from strongly disagree to agree, or not accepting to the accepting level. And then use the help of this, uh, the software, like spaces, we can run this data and we can identify the, the factors group. And that will help the companies to see that what is the specific behavior preferred by the customers. Another important is conjoint analysis. This technique was used to identify the proper combination. Example, suppose Sony wants to launch, Sony wants to launch electronic gadget, an audio system, we can take example, which is digitally, with the, which is with the more feature like the uh, advanced digital features. So like that, I can say one is features, second one is, now the question comes, what price I should offer? Then third one comes with the, whatever the design, the prototype I should offer. The company is having a challenge. And with these three features, now the question comes, what combination they're going to offer? The example with the digital features, again, it can divide them into the higher end digital features, the average or the below average or the basic levels. This is three levels of the digital features. If it's offering the price level, so it may be offering, let's take example, three price levels, P1, P2, P3, like premium, average, and below, which is at par with the customers. Or else the models, prototypes, like design of the product, the particular, the gadget, like design A, design B, design C. So the question comes, which combination I should offer to the market? Whether I should offer to the market, the price one, that is P1, with the design A, and with the features A, feature first feature. Like that, they may be having a different combinations. And customers will be surveyed Ask that which combinations you are giving high priority are the least priority. Like that opinions will be collected through the questionnaire and they can analyze which, which combination is given priority. So that is the first priority for company to launch that combination in the market. That way conjoint analysis a very common technique used to see that what are the proper combinations when they're going to launch a new product in the market to test the product, to test the combinations because company investing billions to get their money. You want to manufacture one design in the production department. So the cost incurs if the design fails. So for that, they're taking the customer's opinion first. For that, they use this conjoint analysis technique in the market to see that what combinations was given high priority by the customers. That way they can, the risk level will be less for the companies when they're going to launch a part of combinations. MDS is called as a multi-dimension scaling, where companies try to see that which brands prefer with the customers. If they want to compare among the brands, suppose, uh, we take example an example of the, the cameras, digital cameras. If I talk about Samsung, Kodak, Sony, 
So like that three brands, if I take, so I want to assess that which brands customers are preferring. So that may be issued by the agency or by the Sony company itself that, okay, what is the position of my brand in the customer's mind? How far it is positively or negatively compared to the so Sony is conducting survey and, be, and comparing it with the Kodak or with the Samsung. So it's called the perceptual mapping. The other name called as a perceptual mapping. So using this technology, using this method, that is multiple dimension scaling or the perceptual mapping technique. So marketers able to assess that which brand, okay, is highly positioned in the customer's mind with what features. If Sony comparing with the Kodak, it may assess that where is the Kodak? What is my position compared to that? Now, what my strategy is to reach the position of the Kodak, what it is in the industry. Cluster analysis, the technique used to segment the customers. Means divide the customers because when you talk, talk clusters means it is easy for companies. First, let me divide the customers and go with the customized promotions, customized marketing strategies to the individual clusters. They divide those clusters, assess the each cluster's requirements, and they come up with the specific niche strategies. Very important other is in the retail industry, particularly the companies, marketing companies, they're very interested in how the retail sales were happening, how my customers are responding, how my business is going on in the retail outlets. You can take a hypermarket, supermarket, <clears throat> or a department of stores. So companies look on that, how the retail business were happening, what the revenue they are generating, how much units were sold. So all this will be assessed under the called concept called as retail analytics. Under that, you're using these three key techniques. First one is market basket analysis. Second one is RFM analysis. And third one is shelf space analysis. If we talk about market basket analysis, it means a company wants to know that what is my product share in the market? So basket means how much the products purchased by customers. So that way they able to assess and compare the competitors. What are the percentage of the sales were happening? All this will be analyzed. Then coming with the RFM analysis, it's called as recency, frequency, and monetary analysis. This RFM analysis used by companies to see that how much demand for my products is there. I'm having customers, but whether they are potential, are they giving me really business or not? So this is a question mark with the companies. Maybe company having a suppose 100 billion customers, whether all customers are giving a revenue, all customers are giving a voluminous business. This is a big question for companies. You want to take a small example of a retail chain store, example, a shopper stop, which is offering a discounts to their customers. You can see the loyalty points. They normally call it the loyalty cards, where they used to offer discounts to the customers. So the question comes, whether I should offer the same benefit to all customers or only those customers who are giving a high business or to retain the customers, I should go with the strategy of high discount for high potential customers, average, that is a category B discount for the B category of customers who are giving the average business. R to the third person, that is a third category where 
the customers who are very slow purchasers. So like that, this type of the RFM analysis, that is the recency means how recently customers are purchasing my products. Frequency means how many times the customer purchase the products in a month. Monetary means how much money he spent on my brand, on my products to purchase. That way, the recent purchase, how many times he purchased, that's the frequency, and how much money he invested to purchase products. So based on that, company can decide that, yes, he is a potential customer. Suppose the customer is purchasing a brand of so, so Sony products by with the billing of around uh, 50,000 rupees every two months or every three months. And a customer who is just investing or purchasing just a three to 5,000, a lot of differences there. So this type of analysis will be done with the help of the RFM analysis. Where a shelf space analysis. Shelf space analysis is where companies try to see that what is the movement of their products in the shelves in the retail outlets. Or what is the frequency of those units movement in the particular shelves. The next part is quickly, let me go with the analytics in advertising and promotion, which talks about purely advertising effectiveness and media mix models. Advertising effectiveness means companies coming up with the various number of advertisements. They are not with the single advertisements to the customers, correct? So you see that in your place, with the company is offering of promoting the customers, promoting their products with the different, different advertisements for the different segments. Based on the type of the customers. Now they want to check that whether these advertisements are reached to the customers or not. What is the effectiveness of advertisements? Is it generating a business or not? Many times you see that some companies, they use big brand ambassadors. They are paying huge royalty to them, but business is not happening. Even some companies, they are using the CINE models in their advertisements, they are getting good business. The companies have to relook on that. And even not only the ambassadors, brand ambassadors I'm talking, it talks about the, the advertisements content, the appeal, the background music, the synchronization, all these count. That way companies try to see that whether my ad is effective or not. Media mix models, you see that multi-channel marketing like that same in the media mix. So companies are using the various medias. Example, direct marketing is there. Newspapers through that, companies are giving advertisements. They're giving the advertisements through the holdings. So like that, they're using the different medias. So company, they cannot reach the customers only with one media. They had to reach the customers with the different medias. The customers who are online, always online savvy. So companies try to see that their ads should be through online, through the websites. The customers are visiting shopping malls, so the holdings, or the newspapers. So like that, it is very. So which media mix I should offer that way. So companies are using various tools to assess that. And specifically in web analytics, they try to see that in online marketing, nowadays companies are using various websites. The question comes, how best they able to retain the customers when a customer visits the website how much time he's spending on the website, how much the frames he searched, how many information contents he clicked, how many times he is doing a repeating visit to the particular website, how many comments he made. That's what you can see the number of views, number of likes, number of shares, number of comments. So all these talks about that particular website performance. 
which is a platform like a, a retail store in the offline, like a online store for companies where these websites are attracting customers and generating business for the companies. Now they want to check that whether these websites are performing well or not. Are we getting good business or not? So this was answered with the help of the web analytics. That is where they are going to analyze the number of views, number of likes, all those things. Social listening analytics, which talks about the social media importance. Today we can see that most of social medias like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, everything is having their own impact and they have their own community. Now, which one I should choose? Which one is having high impact for my products? So companies, marketing companies have seen that that particular the potentiality with the proper analytical tools. So this is all about what I shared, the views of the marketing analytics, which like an umbrella, we can say under that, I can say there will be product analytics, there will be pricing analytics, there will be promotion analytics, web analytics, customer preference. So all these are the different areas where we can see this analytics can be assessed. Now, these analysts, when they do, they're using the various softwares as a platform among them. It may be MS Excel, it may be SPSS, or maybe the SAS softwares. Now, let me take, us, take you to the one example, promotion analytics. So promotion is a part of the advertising. We know in the promotion mix, direct marketing, advertising, sales promotion, publicity, public relation, which are acting as a promotion mix. Now the options with the company, which combinations I should select. So in that way, when it comes to particular promotions, so how they take the strategies, how they do the analytics uh, analysis with the help of the analytics, let us have a look on this. So any company you take, their promotion depends upon the promotion budget. And we do this promotion budget. So again, depending upon the various factors. So it will be depending upon the, so some companies, they decide the advertising budget or a promotion budget. Among the promotion budget, okay, they decide, okay. So this is the overall promotion budget. Under that, we are going to uh, invest so-and-so percentage or so-and-so volume, so-and-so dollars like that. So companies may use like percentage sales method or competitive parity method, or you can see the objective task method, or they may use the affordable method. To talk about the percentage sales method, it totally says that about the budget is based on the percentage of annual revenue, what they got in the previous year. You can see here in this, uh, <clears throat> This first one that is the percentage of sales. In this, what they do, they see that what is the annual revenue of last year? Okay. One minute. Yeah. So what is the last year sales? And based on that, some percentage they'll take, that will be the budget for the promotions. Or else with the affordable method, where they'll set the budget, Okay, and here, suppose they set budget to whatever the organizations can afford because every company is having their own limitations. So after, I say after allotting the funds to those expenses, later remaining will be considered for the promotion. That's a part of called as a affordable method. The example, a budget of $20,000 for all expenses so after spending $18,000, so remaining $2,000 can be assessed for the promotion expense. Whereas compared competitive parity, so you compare with the competitions. Example here, promotion budget of the competitors and you compare with yours and then you can decide uh, how much the budget I should assess. Example, big three automakers like GM, General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler. We take three, so can they're matching their spending levels. 
objective method so companies if they have certain objectives so as per that they are going to spend the money example here set the budget according to the objectives to be achieved objectives like they have different objectives like enhancing the market share or reaching the number of customers or reaching the business or selling the that much of quantity of the products that way they have the objectives so you can see here example 10% of market share of 40 million people means they have a target of 4 million people to be reach advertising reach 80% of reach of among the 40 million means should more than or equal to 32 million people that way so what are the objective they frame so as per that they are going to decide the promotions model base so depending upon the models they going to decide what will be the <coughs> proper promotions i can see the promotion allocation so in this we see the one model that is a linear optimization model the linear optimization model that is also called as linear programming problem that is lpp model an operation research model were used to assess the proper promotion allocation you can see here so every linear model it is having inputs and outputs so the inputs is like objective functions and the constraints so based on the objective function and the constraints the output will be decided so objective function always like maximizing the profit or minimizing the cost and to reach that the target so every company is having their own constraints and considering the constraints they try to enhance their profit this is the lpp model we see so there is a linear optimization model were used for promotion allocation so let us discuss about the constraints first if you take any promotion allocation so companies are having different types of constraints like maybe financial constraints or contractual constraints or company policy constraints or maybe the legal constraints so it may be any type of the constraints which is affecting the company's promotional allocations so in that way so company has to relook on the optimization problems with the model development with the optimization and evaluate and the solutions so here while allocating you can see that linear optimization process were used for analyzing where the objective function is maximize or minimize the profit and input variables are resources and issue variables how many to take how to allocate the constraints so let me show you an example with the excel using ms excel solver how we able to solve the problems for analyzing the particular calculations so i hope um, promotion analytics uh madam i'm i want to show a excel sheet with analysis uh is it visible yeah excel sheet is visible not it okay so again i think i need to share here new share okay i hope now it's visible yes yeah so this is example where <coughs> so company is uh, trying to identify which channel is better so here in the promotion mix <coughs> sorry so three channels were decided direct marketing ppc and the social media so direct marketing means yeah one minute i'm able to um excuse me sir okay <laughs> yes so if <coughs> sorry if you see here the company is using three channels direct marketing ppc and social media ppc means there is a pay per click social media we know and direct marketing that is directly by the company's employees to the customers so this is a sheet where this is lpp model 
so d means direct marketing p means ppc and s is the social media and as i said with the lpp model here we are using so first one is the inputs that is the objective function and you can see this highlighted the areas where we are going to get the output once we run this solar model so let us first understand the concept here so here company is using the model in that the required inputs is and this is the use and this is the available available means this is the constraints here in the right side so direct marketing with the one unit use and available is 30 viewers per campaign they use one campaign okay they will be getting 30 viewers per campaign whereas ppc if they use that is here they'll get 20 viewers per campaign whereas the social media if they run with the one campaign they'll get 10 viewers per campaign now here it is giving us the idea that how many customers are viewing or how many viewers for each type of the campaign the company is getting based on the past historical data okay and also another constraint is given there is a budget per campaign so company is having a limitation of for direct marketing 30 dollar for ppc 40 dollar and for social media 60 dollar per campaign investment so they cannot invest more than that and the overall total is 130 now company wants to check that now they are having 2000 dollars and which is the best combination they can get so that they can get the maximum number of viewers with the better combination of all these among these three and considering the constraints and this unit impressions for each one with the direct marketing they get 30 impressions here 30 impressions and also here 30 impressions 40 impressions now let me run the solver here so for that i need to go with the data okay how to add this yeah first i'll select the data so under data i'm getting i'm using the solver model so with the solver model we go here so the output so it is es14 this is the output and i am choosing the objective function is maximizing the profit or maximum maximize the viewers among these three types of the the combinations so for that so these three these three are the changing variables okay so as the number of units of changes means direct campaign or ppc or social media whatever number of units you are changing so as per that the the total number of impressions also will change now next option is that subject to the constraints if you see here the constraints so the constraints here is so first constraint is this one plus this one want to show me so i'll show you here so i'll show here okay this is the constraints okay we entered so after that if i click okay that is the solver Always must be a single cell on the active sheet. Okay. So here we go with the objective function that should be here. Okay. And now I'll give the solve. Last me that keep solver solution means the output results you want to keep. So I click okay. So it starts giving me the results. One minute. So I'll keep the output hundred, maximize, and all the three inputs eight to ten. The constraints were considered here. so if i run this i am getting the output here 
Okay, I'll just show the output here. And here, Five dollars, and with that, it is best possible combination of these things. I want to know the cost. So, if they want to know the cost, so I'll see that this is cost of dollar that is impression per channel this one into the budget per campaign because it is varying from company to company so if i give equal so i'm getting 900 dollar cost here and with this total is 2000 if i give equals sum if i add all these three so 2000 dollar investments with that I'm getting here how much? 1,700 impressions. So this is the way, so companies are using various methods. Similarly, correlation and regression is another technique where we try to check that what is the relationship between dependent and independent variables. So here, I try to take a, madam, can I take another 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes? Ms. Novita? Yeah, yeah, sure. Can I take an another 10 minutes? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So let me take you all to the another type of analysis uh, that is correlation and regression, which is used to assess to identify the customer's preferences. Here I take an example of the Decathlon. Decathlon is one of the sports franchisee outlet, which is offering sports products of their own private labels. They have different private labels like Kalenji, Quancha, Trayboard, Kipsa, Between, be, Between, Newfield, can see these brands. So the study was carried, a live case was done uh, with uh, along with our students to see that what is the brand equity, how the brand equity is getting impacted, is impacting the customer's purchase intention. A, a live case was taken, analysis was done with respect to the Decathlon case. So here we take an example of the brand equity model. We talk a brand equity means the overall brand perception, brand assessment by the company, by, sorry, by the customers. And how these customers are assessing this brand. So it is analyzed with the four dimensions of the brand equity, there's brand awareness, brand association, brand loyalty, and pursued quality. And these four, how customers are perceiving them, and that leads to the purchase intention, whether to purchase or leave the product. So then we develop a hypothesis like all these, first we check that, yes, this brand awareness is having a relationship with the purchase intention, brand association having a relationship with the purchase intention, brand loyalty is having purchase intention, relation with the purchase intention, pursuit quality also is having intention, uh, relation with the intention. Along with that, another hypothesis we frame that is, with respect to the regression, that is all these four having an impact on the customer's purchase intention. That we frame the two hypotheses here with the two objectives. Now, let me show you how this was done. The analysis was done. Okay. One minute.
correlation correlation i'm opening the uh, spss uh, software now i hope now the data is visible and also i'll open the questionnaire yes yeah i am i'm the first let me show you uh, the questionnaire okay so that it's easy for you to how i had done the analysis and uh, how we moved with this okay yeah. I'll quickly show you the the questionnaire what we prepared now online and uh, how we done the survey. Okay, you can see this questionnaire. So here different uh, demographic data we ask and followed by the brand awareness, pursued quality, brand association, brand loyalty, and purchase intentions. So like this we taken and all these five point rating Likert scale were used. Strongly disagree to agree and the uh, respondents were asked to. give their opinion with respect to each one about the awareness about the quality about the pursued quality about the brand association about the loyalty and the purchase intention so let me show you how we do analysis here so this is the spss data where you can see two is data view and variable view in the variable view you can see that the gender all these and followed by the questions we ask here you can see the coding like ba1 that is brand awareness pq is pursued quality bas is brand association like that and bl is brand loyalty and for this first i'll go to analyze we use the correlation first we'll check the correlation so i'll use the bivariate and here i did and taking the all these five variables the cumulative value if i run this so i am getting a correlation output so here i can make a interpretation that oh, output is yeah now output is visible yeah now you can see this is a space output where you can see that all the five variables are taken among them purchase intention is the dependent variable and these four are the independent variables so purchase intention is a dependent variable which depends on the okay is it having a de degree of correlation yes you can see this pearson's correlation at significant level with the pearson's correlation it is showing 57.3 percentage of association with the brand awareness 76% with the pursued quality 70% with the brand association 73% with the brand loyalty that shows the degree of correlation with the of the dependent variable with those independent variables and significance yes all are significant as they are showing less than 0.05 so all are significant this showing that what this showing that there is a correlation between the dependent and independent variables now i'll show you the regression so if we go go with the regression and here i am running linear in this it gives option like what is dependent and what is independent so among these purchase intention is the dependent variable so i'm dragging this and dropping here in the uh, dependent and whereas the dependency assessed by the four independent variables influence so i'm selecting and dropping here so statistics so no changes here okay darbin watson i'll select then uh, go with the options fine exclude list case wise okay and i'll click okay so now you can see the output of this regression analysis so type of the marketing analytics so you can see here the variables entered so first table was showing all the variables we entered five variables we entered and then followed by model summary 
so in the any, any regression uh, multiple regression which is the type of the multiple uh, variate analysis a very important tool so we'll get three outputs three tables we'll get one is model summary so it talks that what is the degree of influence by the independent variables on the dependent variable so purchase intention so that was assessed with the help of the r square value so r square is 0.650 that is 65% of the explanation by the independent variables of the dependent variable and followed by anova anova is called as a model fit test means whether these independent variables are really impacting or influencing the dependent variable or not that is depending upon the the regression significant value as since significant value is less than 0.05 it is assuring that the model is fit good fit and there is an influence of independent variables on the dependent variable that means purchase intention definitely it was influenced by all these brand awareness brand association with the decathlon brand perception of the pursuit quality and we are getting coefficients which is talk about the unstandardized and standardized beta coefficient values unstandardized coefficient values okay we are going to consider based on the significance now you can see the last column of the significant values so among these independent variables of these four so whichever is less than 0.05 they have significant influence among the four independent variables now you can see brand awareness is not having any significant influence because it is more than 0.05 so hypothetically it is not showing any significant influence whereas the other three pursuit quality brand association brand loyalty these three are less than 0.05 which are assuring that yes among the four these three are having a influence on the purchase intention so next question you can ask that sir among these three which one is having high influence which one is highly contributing than these other among the three because first one is eliminated because having it is not having any significant influence so you can see take the help of these standardized coefficient beta values where these three values among these pursuit quality is showing highest value compared to the other two so that means 0.428 compared to the 4203235 so you can say here the pursuit quality is having a high influence towards the purchase intention of customers then followed by brand loyalty then followed by brand association so it's really a wonderful output where every customer's purchase intention depends upon the how they pursue the quality of the sports products in that outlet and the way company is projecting the quality of the products and pursuit quality means experience of the customers pursuit means experience of the customers of the quality of the products that is a really good output which is showing that company is doing good job and they can focus more on enhancing the customers experience with respect to the decathlon product that's what decathlon is having its own marketing strategies to attract customers where they are creating an environment a sports environment in their the shop where big shops i hope many of you see so where they are creating a free platforms for customers to come and use the sports equipments play it and drop there itself that way they are creating they, they are enhancing the the experience of the products so that is indirectly enhancing the sales and also enhancing the purchase of the customers that way so this uh, regression okay this multiple regression model is one of the technique used by the marketers to assess the customer's preference towards the particular brand and suppose you want to ask that okay what is the coefficient influence okay that you can we can write the regression equation here as we know that y is equal to a plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 plus b3 x that is the normally we write the multiple regression equation so here is the constant or intercept value or uh, here we can say like purchase intention you can write here the equation like purchase intention is a dependent variable which is equals to the intercept value is that is the 0.153 plus plus brand awareness into 0. Point, sorry 0. 0.010 multiplied by brand awareness plus 0. 0.461 into pursuit quality plus 0.221 multiplied by brand association plus 0.227 into brand loyalty 
so that way we can we can write a multiple regression equation which is helping the organizations to see that if a one unit of brand purchase intention is going to be enhanced what is the proportionate contribution of the each independent variable that's called the coefficient value so as i said here 0 0.010 0 0.461 0 0.221 0 0.227 they're all the coefficient values so based on that now company can take decision that which is contributing less now they had to revise their marketing strategies which is contributing high let us maintain the same strategy and still try to enhance that that way so companies can take the decisions based on this type of the statistical tools analysis which is part of the where which were used to find a solution to analyze the roi to analyze the impact of their marketing strategies in the industry so these statistical tools are used by the companies and these are the examples madam noita uh, my presentation is over if any discussion any queries from the customers uh, from, from the participants i'm happy to discuss with them okay thank you for presentation and now we have q and a session yeah for first question we have miss rajeshwari yeah for miss rajeshwari you can ask me. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, madam. Hello. Can, uh, can you all hear me? Is it audible? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, you are audible. Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, sir. My name is Radiswari. Yeah, my name is Radiswari. I'm a third semester student at Stockholm University. Sir, uh, can you please show me that about the linear regression about the SP SS the last one about the ANOVA and the the rest one? Okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. I'll the see. last part you explained. Yeah. yeah. One minute. Uh, let me share this thing. Yes. Mm, okay. Uh, the coefficients. The coefficients. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, you said that between mm. the brand awareness, perceived quality, and so on, it is the most uh, the most good quality is perceived quality. Yeah. Yes. How can perceived quality have a good uh, coefficient rather than brand awareness? Sir? Because uh, if people, uh, if customer didn't realize or didn't aware about uh, some brand then how can they can achieve a perceived quality the good Fine. coefficient of perceived quality yeah that's my question yes yes good question very good question yeah okay. uh, generally because it's a process because unless until customer know the brand mm -hmm. he never purchase the product mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. yeah and uh, many times we purchase the products without knowing brand also yeah. Because many times the situations like where we went to market, mm -hmm. I never seen the ad. Mm -hmm. I want to purchase a product which can fulfill my needs or mm -hmm. give a solution for my problem. Mm -hmm. Suppose you want to purchase a gadget yeah. or suppose you want to purchase a uh, sports shoe. You have mm -hmm. only in the mind that Nike or Adidas. Okay. And you went to the shopping mall mm -hmm. and you see that there's a new brand is there. Okay. And then customer then tried that, to that new brand. Yes, yes. And, okay. and you see that it, it is looking more quality oriented because the quality we check by checking the thickness of the shoes or the materials they use for that particular product. And it, it is individual mm -hmm. perception. Mm -hmm. And you see that, okay, it is worthy. Okay, even though it's a new brand, but it is mm -hmm. having very good quality mm -hmm. compared to the Nike and it is very feather light compared to Adidas. Mm -hmm. Design is innovative, which was not offered by Nike and Adidas. Mm -hmm. So what you do, it'll become impulse and you'll purchase a product. Okay. And you purchase only because of reason what? The quality, what you pursued. Okay. In behavior, consumer behavior, we say two words. One is consumer expectation and consumer perception. Mm -hmm. Expectation means the customers are expecting about the product's quality, 
based on how companies are creating awareness through the promotions fine or maybe through the advertisements and based on that customer means they are promising that yes my brand is so and so we are offering best quality products and our products are offering so and so solutions with warranty guarantee blah blah like that they used to tell they promise so many things correct okay. so based on the promise what you observed it may be through the advertisements or through by seeing the uh, holdings okay. or by receiving the the coupons through mobile yes so, so based on that your, expect, your expectation will be high mm -hmm. so and you want to meet uh, the same experience when you're going to purchase the product okay Mm -hmm. So that's what so, that's so, what. So uh -huh. Decathlon is one example. Mm -hmm. One example. They are the different business model specifically, mm -hmm. and you know that it's a global brand, and mm -hmm. they are offering best price mm -hmm. with the best quality mm -hmm. and with the varieties. Varieties are more compared to the the domestic products, okay. domestic companies, and that's so, what they have a beautiful okay. concept. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, sir, is that mean that brand awareness will increase by the time by the time going on as long as that quality perceived by the customer? No. No. Brand awareness is a separate component. Perceived okay. quality is separate component. That's what I told the beginning. Model price, brand equity model. We say hmm. the brand equity okay. means overall brand, how hmm. customer perceives, how experience. Okay. And okay. what his opinion about a brand? Suppose if you say uh, Sony means wow, you say, or HCL means wow, you say, or mm -hmm. Nike means wow, you say. Mm -hmm. But you say wow factor. It depends upon the various dimensions of the brand, about mm -hmm. the awareness, mm -hmm. about the loyalty, how much mm -hmm. you are having loyalty with the brand, mm -hmm. brand okay. association, how much you are associated with that brand. Because everyone not associated with the brand. Yeah. One may be brand loyal, but they not be associated. Yeah. And also the quality, how they pursued with the past experience. Okay. So all these counts mm -hmm. overall brand equity model. Mm -hmm. So that way, so brand equity models are telling that how companies are best in the industry. Mm -hmm. And that will be assessed by the customers by considering all these four dimensions, not by one. Okay. That's what brand awareness mm -hmm. is different. Suppose company now they know that. As you pointed out really, uh, clearly, it is mm -hmm. showing less. That means yeah. company has to take a care that yes, our brand awareness is taking second place compared mm -hmm. to perceived quality. Mm -hmm. That means now I want to increase the sales. Now what mm -hmm. are the options with me? Okay. Because the study was done to enhance the I understand the purchase intention, mm -hmm. and that purchase intention helping the companies. To enhance, mm -hmm. uh, to come up with the best possible marketing strategies. Okay. Now they can focus on brand awareness. Now they know that now brand awareness is poor. Okay, what to do? Now they had to rethink on their brand awareness strategies. Mm -hmm. Awareness may be poor, or maybe in the average, not that much poor. But customers are know my products. Awareness means customers know my product, but compared to the population, very less percentage. Mm -hmm. Now I had to give some more advertisements. Mm -hmm. I had to sponsor for the events, mm -hmm. correct? Na? Mm -hmm. Like sports events, if they sponsor like cricket match or football mm -hmm. match, mm -hmm. they sponsor or any societal CSR related activities, if they sponsor. So people come to know about the brand. Mm -hmm. That way they can take the initiatives based on this type of the analysis. Okay. Okay. Got yeah. it, sir. Okay. Got it. Uh, I have some more questions. May I? Please, please. <laughs> okay. So nowadays people are more interested with uh, online shopping. As we know that all products in online shopping are affordable sir, because it is tax free. But yeah. uh, to attract people, marketplace uh, apply free shipping services. So how is it uh, give some impact to the sales margin sir? Yeah, sales margin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, see what happened when the company I told a word called as multi-channel marketing. Yeah. Multi-channel marketing means a company can use different channels to market their products or sell their products. Mm -hmm. So first channel is domestic stores. Mm -hmm. 
domestic departmental stores which are near to the customers which are small in size second channel is supermarkets third channel is online market yeah means there is a different platforms mm -hmm. which is affordable to the different category of the customers online customers they prefer online websites mm -hmm. above average income people they prefer supermarkets mm -hmm. below average income people they prefer departmental stores as a company i want my products to be purchased by all customers if i am offering the affordable price means i told penetration pricing strategy if i am using which is affordable to all category of customers mm -hmm. then i should see that it should be available and it should fit in all shelves it may be online or offline correct so when companies are offering online you said they are tax free yeah they are offering yeah. high discounts yeah <laughs> yeah correct yeah you yeah, because that products uh, price is affordable from that offline store because yeah they are yeah. tax is free right so <laughs> now companies you can see that mm -hmm. earlier when the online companies started selling the products they used to enjoy this mm -hmm. so on that time lot of conflicts happened among the distribution channels this called a distribution okay. channel conflict okay. where a domestic player says that domestic store or supermarket store owner is saying that are baba you are selling the products with the less price in the online mm -hmm. and customers are not you are not giving discount to us and customer okay. purchasing online then why i should keep your product in my store and sell and waste my investments so this type of the channel conflict starts happening and now you can see that most of the companies most of the standard companies mm -hmm. they try to maintain at par price with the online and offline but still i'll answer your question mm -hmm. where every company is offering different discounts oh, sorry every platform is offering dis different discounts Mm -hmm. it's because of the sales what they offered to the company suppose if they promise mm -hmm. and if they purchase a voluminous mm -hmm. so as per that they'll be getting the discounts and the yeah. same discounts the margins how much they are sacrificing depends on that the additional discounts will be offered in the outlet take example mm -hmm. one department store selling the products sony products okay mm. and they are offering 30% discount mm. fine mm. another outlet if you go they are offering the same product at 40% discount mm -hmm. why because the store b he want to push the sony products as quickly as possible mm. and he will purchase voluminous and he got a good discount because we know when the companies are in the channel members when they purchase voluminous so they will be having a trade discount they will be getting a trade discount if you purchase 100 bundles he will get 5% discount if you purchase 200 bundles he will get 10% discount if the same another store owner if you purchase 500 bundles he will get around 40% discount this okay. is a trade discount normally happen um, and that so is the margin volume is it it is yeah. based for okay oh okay so okay. depending on that they come with the strategy uh okay mm. and you go to store b which is offering mm. higher discount mm -hmm. than the store a which is offering only 20 and you go to the 40% discount or 30% which is offering because you see higher benefits and when you purchase like you like you if 100 customers come and purchase whose sales goes fast store b na yeah store a you the only 10 units sold by the time he would be sold the store b would be sold 100 units yeah is all their internal strategies okay 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 thank you sir sir actually i have some more question more but Please. i already no, noticed by novita madam that the time is running <laughs> out so <laughs> i think yeah it's fine it's fine uh, uh, even even if you have any doubts okay please feel free to uh, send me a mail <laughs> miss nofita hello yeah. <laughs> okay i'm you can running send me out a time mail. 
Oke. Oke, sir. Yes, madam. Novita, madam. Now, up. left to you. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for answering. Yeah, and I will thank send you. an email to you if I want. Sure, 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 sure. Thank sure. you. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, thank you for Dr. Sobaseka for coming at this event today. Yeah, I will say thanks again for Dr. Sobaseka for their information will be benefit to our audience and I hope we can meet again at other event. Thank you for joining at this visiting lecture today. Thank you so much for Dr. Sobaseka. Yeah. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I thank all participants for their uh, active participation and even asking the questions. And uh, also, I hope uh, my experience uh, helped a lot. And even thanks for associating with the Vidya Varadka College, our college. And in future, definitely from our end, whatever the support you want from the MBA department, we are providing. And even we do consultancies. We do consultancies and tie up with the international universities and even students if they are interested. Like I, I just shown uh, live the case, okay, that yeah. survey we did and we uh, do, did the analysis. So like that we used to go with such a projects with the students. So if any students from your end, if they are interested, yeah. so that would be most welcome to do such type of the, the projects. Yeah. It's an open invitation from my end. Please. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank I you. will send in your email. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And see you. Uh, shall I type yes? Wo. Yes, wo. I think uh, you got the mail now, madam. My mail. My mail yeah. ID, you know. My mail ID, you know. Yes, wo. M A S H E. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have your email. Okay, thank you. I don't so know much. how to type here. That's what. Yeah, thank you so much, doctor. See you. You. Thank you again. See you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Or else, yeah. okay, just one minute. One minute, madam. I'll type here in the chat. One minute. Yeah. I'll type. It's okay. Yes. O M A S H E K H A R I C at V V C E dot A C dot in. So much, sir. I C at V V C E dot A C dot in. You can note down. S O M A S H E K H A R I C at at the rate V V C E dot A C dot in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I did not this. Okay. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and good morning. See you soon. Thank you, madam. See you soon, madam. I yeah. leave the. I take leave. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Shall I take leave, madam? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Untuk... Okay. Untuk sesi kedua dari Fuzo Politeknik Cina akan dilanjutkan pada pukul setengah dua. Jadi untuk saat ini kita punya waktu sekitar tujuh menit untuk istirahat sebentar. Oke. Okay. Terima kasih semua. Selamat siang.
good afternoon everyone to start this event today i hope we have a good mood and for this event rooms mostly i will introduce our speaker today first we have mr chen chia cheng from fuzo polytechnic china and then we have opening speech by deans from entrepreneurship mr ahmad zainuri yeah before we start before before we start for presentation today um, I would love to tell you we are going to listen opening speech by Mr. Ahmad Zainuri. Yeah, for Mr. Ahmad Zainuri, you can start for this event. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for uh, Ms. Novita. Okay, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I start my opening speech, I want to introduce myself. Let me introduce myself. My name is Ahmad Zainuri. You can, uh, you can call me Mr. Ahmad. I'm a head of entrepreneurship study program in Stockholm University. Okay, uh, the other one, Mr. Dr. Joseph Tegur Santoso, MCOM as a rector of Stockholm University, the Honorable Mr. Cheng Chia Cheng, as a lecturer or senior technician, the Honorable Ms. Novita, as an international affairs division of Stockholm University, and also all of distinguished guests. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, may I first take this occasion to pay tribute to all of the audiences of this physicing lecture from Fuzhou Polytechnic China to University of Science and Computer Technology or Stockholm University. It is a great pleasure and an honor for me to deliver this opening speech of visiting lecture. My efforts take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation as well as extend a cordial welcome to all of the audiences in today's event. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia has become a part of the global community so that the demands for dealing with the world definitely increase. Therefore, in line with advances in communication technology, we are increasingly hearing the term global village. The world community is getting easier to communicate with each other like in a village. The existence of free trade areas or free trade zones, such as the Asian Community 2015, CAFTA, AFTA, and the others require us to be able to combat with other countries. All parties agree that the fields of education has a very large role in the development of a nation, especially economic development. In the context of economic development, the role of formal education is very visible. If we are able to improve the level of education, then Indonesia will automatically be able to combat in all fields with other countries. This competition with other countries, of course, also applies in the world of universities. Universities in Indonesia, as one of the tribe of the national development, are responsible for producing graduates who have deep and broad insights and skills for locally, nationally, and internationally, and are able to compete with graduates from other countries, university. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, to improve the competitiveness of Indonesian universities with foreign universities, we need to seriously consider improving the quality of universities. One way to improve the quality of this higher education institution can be achieved more quickly is to establish cooperation with foreign universities that have a good reputation. Higher education internationalization is defined as a process in universities 
that integrates international components into the objective functions or delivery of education, including curriculum development and innovation, lecture and student exchange, development and expansion of study programs, utilization of technological system for learning, cultural training education for international students, and research co-publication. Okay, next, ladies and gentlemen, Fuzhou Polytechnic is a private university in China with the visiting lecture from Fuzhou Polytechnic to Stockholm University is a form of commitment to the implementation of the three dharma of higher education and also cooperation for LPPM and LPMI institution. This is done because it is a necessity to prepare and improve quality lecture at Stockholm University in particular and both parties in general. And at the moment, it is implemented. Cooperation agreement between the two parties in various fields, namely academic and research study opportunities, student exchange, short-term and long-term faculty exchange, delegation visit, and the other mutually agreed activities or programs. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, I would like to express my appreciation to the International Affairs Organization of Stockholm University and Fuzhou Polytechnic for making this international relationship. I hope this collaboration can run well and good communication can be established. Okay, thank you, Ms. Novita. Please continue. Thank, thank you for Mr. Ahmad Zainuri for opening speech. And then we have speaker presentation from Fuzo Polytechnic China. We are from Fuzo Polytechnic China. You can start for this class. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad. Thank you, Navita. And this afternoon, we are going to continue to introduce about the new energy vehicle. And just now, Mr. Ammon said that um, uh, we, are, uh, we are making good endeavor in international cooperation. Yeah, it is true. Um, currently, we are um, planning to enroll international students. So who are interested in Mandarin and uh, the applied technology? You can. You are welcome to apply for our international student. Okay, thank you. So we will start our lecture. Um, first of all, let's welcome our lecturer this afternoon, Mr. Chen Jia Chen. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Today afternoon, we will talk about the topic of new energy vehicles and their future Okay, uh, this afternoon, I am going to introduce the high voltage safety in new energy vehicles and the industrial development trend of new energy. Okay.讲座的内容包括第一个,新能源汽车高压安全防护,第二个,给大家介绍一下汽车产业重点区域发展现状及产业的重点发展趋势。this afternoon, I will tell from three parts. First of all, I would like to introduce from the high voltage safety and protection measures for new energy vehicles. Second, I will tell from the development state of automotive industry in key fields. And the third, I will tell from the development plan if you're seeing automotive development industry. 第一个高压系统的工作原理，通过前面的学两天的讲座，大家已经知道了。新能源汽车的高压组成部件包括各系统的高压部件及连接高压部件的成色线束。First of all, I'd like to introduce the working principle of the new energy. From last two days' lecture, you have already known some basic structure and uh, its uh, component of
Okay, so today um, I'm going to con I continue to introduce the working principle and the high voltage power distribution system is composed of high voltage components and orange harness connecting high voltage components. 高压系统的工作过程主要由动力电池将电能到分线和给到我们的电机控制器及空调等高压部件来驱动新能源汽车行驶。and about the principle, and um, we can see from this map that uh, it's uh, mainly from the power battery. Then we connect the charging port and uh, to convert the electricity to driving motor, then the car will go. Now,高压动力电池主要结构包含动力电池模组及电池管理系统。and about the um, power battery system, it may consist of the power battery box and power battery module. 通过前面的了解,我们知道新能源汽车含有高压电池包,那么大家是否担心高压安全呢? So from the prior um, knowledge, about new energy, you will find that it consists of high voltage batteries. So are you worried about the safety of the high voltage? 比如智囊, 漏电, Such as self-burning, electricity wickage in waiting, and the electricity shock. 人体触电主要是人体流通电流的大小对人的伤害 um, The hertz from current, meaning from the, um, the electricity shock to our human body 我们可以把人体通过电流伤害分为感知电流, 摆脱电流和危险电流三种 The hertz, we mainly divide them into fuel current Breakaway and the dangerous current. 通过研究表明，当触电电流为两百毫安时，它的摆脱极限是十毫秒. And there is some uh, in, investigation shows us that when the current is higher than two hundred, then it will take us ten seconds to break away. 而我们新能源的电压一般为三百伏。人体电阻大约为一千欧，那触电电流大约达到三百毫安。So about the hertz from the electricity, um, uh, the volt voltage of the new energy is about three hundred volts. So it will give us um quite a numb feeling. 所以高压。危险。那么，新能源汽车上有哪些高压安全防护措施呢？ So, um, what kind of uh, safety protection measures for us to use the new energy vehicles? 首先，我们的高压部件上多有橙色高压安全标识。First of all, there are high voltage signs at the new energy. 并且既有相应的防护等级, and it also um, mark the high voltage safety protection level. 那我们的防护等级达到了IP67防护等级. Um, the the um, safety protection level reached IP67. IP67 第一个数字, Among the IP67 protection level, about the first digit, and it represents the um, level of dustproof electrical appliance and the intrusion of extra objects. 六的等级达到了可以防止任何外物侵入。
the highest protection level can um, avoid anything to intrude the new energy, the battery. IP 反复等级的第二个数字表示电器的防湿、防水侵入的等级。The second digit of the IP protection level indicates the degree of air tightness of the electrical appliance against the moisture and water immersion. 七的等级可以达到在水下一米深持续浸泡三十分钟不涉水。If it can reach the seven grade, it can pervade and protect from immersion. Um, for thirty minutes in water, up to one minute, one meter deep. 第二个方面，高压系统上多具有橙色高压线束，有效绝缘防护，防止电池辐射。In a high voltage system, there are always set the orange cable, and it is a kind of high voltage system used orange. Our orange warning cable, it can effectively insulate and prevents electromagnetic radiation. 同时，新能源上设有动力电池包模组之间的维修手动维修开关，它是电动车在装配维修作业当中最基本、最有效的保护手段。In a new energy vehicle, it also uh equipped with manual maintenance switch. The power battery pack is uh always equipped with this kind of switch. It is a manual maintenance switch. It's very important. It's the most basic and effective protection method for electric vehicle in assembly and maintenance operation. 高压系统上还设有监测高压部件。电缆、插接器、保护盖等电器完整性的高压附锁装置。嗯、um, ，it always also equipped with、um, some high voltage monitor components like、um, cables, connectors, protective covers。主要应用的是低压回路监测高压回路的导通情况。And its main its main function is to monitor the conversion of the high voltage. 高压附锁的类型实际上还涵括着附锁检测、开盖检测、连接检测三种。About the high voltage interlock, it consists of interlock detection, lead opening detection, connection detection. 其次，新能源上还设有上下电、高压上下电流程，由低压十二伏触发和控制。嗯、um, ，In the new energy vehicle, it also equipped with power on and power off control. The power on and power off process of the high voltage system are triggered and controlled by the low voltage twelve volts system. 高压系统的管理系统还采用了故障分级和保护，以防止过压、过流、过热、短路等故障。And、um, for the high voltage safety protection method, it also equipped with a fault protection. The system adopts fault classification and protection to prevent over voltage, over current, overheating, short circuit, etc. 高压安全方案除了前面介绍的几种，其实还含有绝缘电阻监测、电位平衡线路等十余种高压安全防护措施。Um, besides uh, the protection measures just now we introduced, new energy vehicles also equipped with some high voltage protection measure like the insulation resistant monitoring, uh, insul um. Insulation measures for high voltage system line, and the controlling line, and repair plug, and something like that. 新能源汽车本身具有很多的高压安全防护装备。
但我们在进行维修作业时，还需要做好高压安全防护措施。Build a new energy vehicle equipped with lots of safety protection equipment, but we still have to wear an extra and safety protection equipment like the helmets, the gloves. 主要是佩戴好绝缘手套、绝缘鞋，做好防护隔离等。And、others and wears like and the shoes, the safety shoes, and take those、um, instruments. You have to、uh, really scare off the electricity. 同时，我们还需要遵守高压安全作业规定。At the same time, we still have to obey the regulation of operation. 主要有高压断电，防止接通确认无误三个步骤。And、uh, it mainly consists of、uh, cutting off the high voltage,、uh, preventing connection, and power off confirm. 第二个方面，我们来介绍一下汽车产业重点领域的发展现状。And、uh, the second part, I would like to introduce the development status of key areas of the automotive industry. 中国乘用车市场销量和保有量持续增长。The annual sales and ownership of China's passenger car market continue to grow. 根据能源署的预测。到本世纪中叶，全球新能源汽车主要以插电式混电动力汽车、纯电动汽车、氢燃料电动汽车为主。The International Energy Agency predicts that in 2050, the world's new energy vehicle will be mainly plug-in hybrid vehicle, pure electric vehicle, and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. 中国。最大的新车市场地位已确定，市场进入普及中后期，下行压力较大。嗯、um, ，China has already entered, uh, has already been the world's largest new car market, and the market has entered the middle and late stages of popular popularization, and the downward pressure is relatively high. 同时，中国的品牌。取得了较阶段性的成果，但市场占有率仍然不足五成。Chinese brands have achieved initial results, but their market share is still less than fifty percent. 新能源产业在政策的指导下蓬勃发展。The new energy industry are developing. Vigorously under the guidance of policy support. Coordinated、uh, the continual upgrading of environmental protection and other standards have promoted industry technology progress and product upgrades. 但同时，标准制定在节奏、力度、结合产业等实际方面也存在一定问题。But at the same time, there are certain problems in the pace, intensity, and integration of industry practice in standard formulation. 油耗标准以及新能源双积分政策的不断升级，推动的产业节能发展。嗯、um, ，Excuse me, Xiao.、Okay. Yeah, I mean, I know if there is no search screen. I mean, a、uh, presentation fail. Sorry. Okay, now we talk. What's the problem? Uh, you cannot hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Novita? Can you hear me? Can you see the PPT? You 可能分享是不是刚才一直都没有分享？就这个要让他再见面上，这样太……呀 ，I can give my I am just asking. Yeah. So, okay, Novita, you now can you read the PPT? Okay, it's okay. Thank you. Okay. And so, um, 
Okay, so just now you did not see the PPT, right? Maybe we miss yeah. or touch some button. So sorry about that. Um, okay, so shall we go back yeah, and uh, shall we go back and uh, to overview it? Yeah, it's okay. You go ahead for this presentation. Thank you. Just to go, just to go ahead or go back to review it once again. Yeah, sorry. Uh, should we go ahead, continue, or should we go back to have a revision to review the PPT? Just now we have already go through. Okay, maybe you can. Oh, from audience request, go back to review, please. From yeah. audience, what's the problem? Oh, if you will continue, it's go okay. Back. Go back to review, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, about the chat board, everyone said go back, okay. Yeah, thank so you, we'll... that was our beginning. Okay, so we, we will go back to the very beginning. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so you can... Now you can read the PPT, right? I can see that, sorry. I will for this. Okay, you can you can read it. Okay, so we will go back and start from the very beginning. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we will um go back and start from page three, the, the first page. Page three, the first point one, working principle in high voltage system. Okay, uh, Mr. Chen Jiacheng, please start. Okay. 通过前两天的学习，大家已经了解了我们新能源汽车的高压部件的主要组成，涵括着高压部件及连接高压部件的成色线束。嗯、um, ，From the previous two lecture, um. You have already know the structure and component of new energy. So today I would like to continue to introduce the working principle in new energy, especially from the high voltage system. And um, in the new energy high voltage system, uh, it is composed of the orange harness connecting uh, high voltage components. And it's many in or, uh, orange color. So you can see from this map. The high voltage working principle mainly consists of the um, power battery, drive motor, and junction box. 那动力电池主要由动力电池模组、电池管理系统等组成。The um power battery module, uh, the power battery system is mainly consists of the power battery module and power battery box. 通过学习，我们知道新能源汽车含有高压电池、高压电。那大家是否担忧高压安全呢？ So you have already know that um, for new energy vehicles, it mainly work with the high voltage batteries. So do you feel worried about the high voltage, the safety of it? So today I'm going to tell you about the safety. In the usage of new energy, uh, it may happen uh, you may worry about that it may happen so burning electricity wreckage in waiting and the repair electricity shock. So do you know any safety measures designed for high voltage system in new energy vehicles? So, 
So new energy vehicle is a kind of uh, intrinsically safe vehicle. It is designed to prevent very high voltage accidents. Uh, it must be able to prevent direct contact shocks and happening electric acts. 主要的高压安全措施有：第一个，高压标识对高压电的所有组件设置警示标识，并具有相应的防护等级。For the high voltage safety protection measures, first of all, uh, you will find you find high voltage signs in the new energy. It set warning signs for all high voltage components, and it has corresponding protection. 防护等级，新能源汽车高压部件采用的是 IP67 防护等级。For the protection level, it mainly u s e the IP67 standard. IP 防护等级第一个数字六表示电器防尘、防止外物侵入的等级。For the IP67, the first digit six,、uh, it indicates the level of Dust proof electrical appliance and the intrusion of extra objects. 第六等级能达到完全阻止外物侵入。If it can reach the grade six, it can prevent any dust to intrude the battery. IP 防护等级第二个数字表示电器防湿、防水、侵侵入的气密程程度等级。The second digit of IP67, uh, it indicates the degree of air tightness of the electrical appliance against the moisture and water immersion. 七的防护等级可以达到持续在水下一米深度，三十分钟浸泡不涉水。If it can reach level seven, it can protect the new energy. Apart from immersion for thirty minutes in water up to one meter deep. 橙色电缆，高压系统采用橙色警示电缆，能有效的绝缘且阻止电磁辐射。In a new energy car, you can easily find those orange cable. Why it use orange? It、uh, can show obvious warning and can effectively insulate and prevents electromagnetic radiation. 手动维修开关，动力电池包在模组中间安装了手动维修开关，是电动汽车在装配维修作业中最有效、本质的保障。So、uh, another measure is、uh, the Manual maintenance switch in a new energy car equipped with this kind of the switch, and it's the most basic and effective protection method for electric vehicles in assembly and maintenance operations. 高压护锁是用于监测高压电部件、电缆、接插器、保护盖等电器完整性。The third、uh, safety protection method is called the high voltage interlock. It can monitor the electrical integrity of high voltage components, cables, connectors, protective covers. 高压护锁涵括护锁检测、开盖检测、连接检测。The high voltage interlock. Consists of interlock detection, lead opening detection, connection detection. New energy vehicles use the high voltage interlock mechanism to control the high voltage. It also equipped with power on and power off control, and this kind of process can.、Uh, It is controlled by the low voltage twelve volts system. It can protect us from the electricity shock. 系统采用故障分级和保护，防止过压、过热、过流、短路等。And、the protection system、uh, adopts fault classification and protection to prevent over voltage. 
over current, overheating, short circuit, etc. 高压安全方案除了前面介绍的，还有节源电阻检测、电位均衡等十一种高压防护措施。And take apart those protection measures just now. We I have introduced the protection measure also includes some、uh, other measures like the insulation, resistant monitoring, and the controlling line, a protection balance line, etc. 新能源车本身具有很多安全防护措施，但我们在进行新能源汽车维护时，同时还要做好用电安全防护。Though the new energy vehicle already equipped with lots of safety protection measures, but to safely repair the electricity car, we still have to wear lots of hardware to protect ourselves. 主要包含佩戴好绝缘手套、绝缘鞋等绝缘防护设施，及使用安全隔离带、警示标识、绝缘工具等。So when we are going to um repair the new energy car, we have to remember to wear those like helmets, gloves to use those instruments. 与此同时，还需要做好高压作业安全规定。At the same time, we we have to keep in mind to obey the high voltage operation regulation. 包括高压断电，防止接通，确认无电，三个步骤。It includes three steps. There are cutting off the high voltage, preventing connection, and power off confirmation. 第二个方面。我们来介绍一下汽车产业重点领域发展现状。And for the second part of today's lecture, I would like to introduce the development status of the key areas of the new energy. 中国乘用车市场销量和保有量持续增长。The annual sales on the ship of China's passenger car market continue to grow. 根据国际能源部。属预测，二零二五年全球新能源汽车将以插电式混合动力汽车、纯电动汽车、氢燃料电电池车为主。The International Energy Agency predicts that in 2050, the world's new energy vehicle will be mainly plug-in hybrid vehicles, pure electric electric vehicles, and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. 中国作为全球最大新车市场地位已确认，已确立，市场将进入普及中后期，下行压力较大。And、China has already been the world's largest new market, new car market, and it has already entered the middle and late stage of popularization, and the downward pressure is relatively high. 中国品牌取得。阶段性成果，但市场占有率仍然不足五成。Chinese brands have achieved initial results, but their market share is still less than fifty percent. 新能源产业在汽车政策支持引导下蓬勃发展。New energy vehicles are developing vigorously under the guidance of policy support. 环保等级标准的不断升级，带动产业技术进步和产品升级。The up, uh, the continuous upgrading of environmental protection and other standards have promoted industrial technology progress and product upgrades. 但同时，标准制定在节奏、力度、产业结合等方面存在一定问题。But at the same time, there are certain problems in the Pace, intensity, integration of industry practice in standard formulation. 油耗标准及新能源双积分政策的不断升级，推动产业节能发展。The continuous upgrading of fuel consumption standard and new energy double point policies, and to promote the development of industrial energy conservation. 第三方面，汽车产业重点领域发展趋势
And the third part, I would like to introduce the development trend in the key fields of the new energy. China's high growth trend has been a steady trend for decades. According to the latest data from the world bank, 千年保有千能保有量数据相比，中国汽车市场还有很大的提升空间。The long-term stable trend of China's macroeconomy will not change, according to the comparison with the data of the number of the people per thousand in developed automobile countries. There's still a lot of room for improvement in the Chinese new energy market. 未来汽车消费模式将发生重大转变。Significant changes will take place in the future of automobile consumption patterns. 消费品质将由中低端向中高端转变。So the consumption quality will shift from low level to mid to high level. 消费形态也将由物资型向服务型转变。So the consumption pattern will change from material type to service type. 保持产品品质，主动创造产品价值，提升产品影响力，向上突破。So for the Chinese brand, we have to maintain our product quality, actively create brand value, enhance our brand influence, and then achieve upward breakthroughs. 新能源产业未来拓展大众普及、大众化普及新。普及型产品是新能源市场发展的重点。The future expansion of popular products is the focus of the development of the new energy market. 目前，新能源消费市场主力购买人群具有较强的购买力，对多数对于产品较为关品牌较为关注。Currently, the customers who would like to buy new energy car has、uh, relatively strong power, so they pay much attention to the brand. 智能网联，智能网联为中国汽车工业向上带来机遇。The fourth point. And the intelligent network connection bring opportunity to China's new energy industry. And currently, the new energy car and phase four modernization. New energy car modernization, digital, 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 digital. The uh the new energy vehicles are characterized by electrification, intelligence, connectivity, and lightweight. 轻量化指的在保证汽车强度、刚度、模态以及安全性能的前提下，尽可能的降低汽车准备质量。So what is lightweight? Under the premise of ensuring the strength, rigidity, model, and safety performance of the car, reduce the quality of the car as much as possible, thereby improving the power and handling of the car, reducing fuel consumption, battery consumption, and reducing exhaust pollution. Like future cars. 长城华冠、北汽新能源、轻量化技术，主要采用的是铝合金及多种先先进的碳纤维车身覆盖件等技术。So for the new brand like um w e l i vehicle, uh the Great Wall 华冠，嗯 ，Future K 5 O and the, the A R C F O X。Um, one, this kind of new energy, they have already used the new, um, like carbon fiber panels. So its weight can be uh, much less than the original one. 多材料轻量化车身技术将从成为重点方向。So the、um, different kinds of new、uh, materials will be the development trend for new energy.
，网联化。车联网是指车与车、车与路、车与人、车与传感设备等交互。And the second one is to networking. The Internet of Vehicle refers to a dynamic mobile communication system that interacts between vehicles and vehicles, vehicles and roads, vehicles and people, vehicles and sensing equipment. 实现车辆与公众网络通讯的动态移动通讯网系统。So to achieve communication between vehicles and the public network. 车联网能够实现智能化交通管理、智能化动态信息服务和车辆控制一体化网络。And the Internet of Vehicles can realize an integrated network of intelligent traffic management, intelligent dynamic confirmation service, and vehicle control. 包。Um, sorry, Madam, sir. I think we cannot hear clearly. Clearly, you any internet connection problem, Madam, or sir? Novita, hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, not clearly. Clearly, right? Not very clearly, right? Yeah, no. Yeah. Mm, this afternoon, maybe because of the signal. Yeah, it's not very fluent. Yeah, it's a good no. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, shall we go on now? Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah, we're almost to finish. We're almost to finish. Maybe only two to three pages left. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. You can okay, continue. Okay, so we will go okay, on. Thank you very much. Okay, my pressure. So, Mr. Chen, Mr. Chen, please go on. 突破无人驾驶技术的主要瓶颈，需要解决传感器融合、车载通讯模块和 AI 决策芯片三大问题。
So if we want to break through the unmanned driving um, technology, we have to solve the sensing, integrated, integrating onboard communication module and AI trips, these three problems. Next, I would like to show you a case of the BAIC. BAIC is a brand of new energy vehicle in China. And it uh, uses a kind of innovation. It integrates social resource, um, domestic pioneering, a green ecological service system, integrating products plus service plus charging plus operation. 同时以资本为纽带，布局前价值链，构建国内首个新能源汽车生态圈。Also, it linked with the capital and to lay out the entire value train, build the first new energy vehicle ecosystem in China. 整车集成开发核心零部件开发等以技术研发为主的资源。um, it, uh, in, about the innovation train, it, the, uh, many use the resource focus on technology research and development, such as vehicle integrated development, core component development, etc. And it also use a new sales um, channel like the e-commerce plus O2O internet. Okay, so I uh, finished all my lecture for this afternoon. Thank you. And so anyone would like um, to ask a question, please uh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much for our presentation. Maybe one of our audience will ask something. Okay, first we have Ms. Rajesh Ferry. Okay, please go ahead. What is your question? Maybe we can see from the chat room. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, hi. Um, oh, wait, I will increase my volume first because it is raining outside, so that is a bit noisy. Uh, I would like to ask uh, the first questions. Okay. Um, okay. About the four modernization modernization for new energy. One yeah. of them it is uh, as you mentioned about a lightweight car. So is that yeah. mean that manufacturer will reduce the quality of the material because uh, as i ever uh, as i ever saw uh, on 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 uh, news that uh, tesla autonomous vehicle car especially in car it is uh, it is a it is burn it is get burned and apa it is it burns into a flames after it it it, it hit the tree and it is Lately, found that the, it is because the battery leak that caused the collision. So, what is your opinion about this? Okay, uh, Novita, can you help us to type the question? And uh, Rajavasri, uh, can you um, speak the to us the question again? Just now, you mentioned that four modernization. Um, first one is light witness. Yeah, mm, so you mean uh, when the new energy car hit the tree, it happens the explosion or um, burning, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you want to ask about mm, what's the reason for the burning? Yeah, what is caused by? Because is that because uh, the language? The manufacturer, yeah, the manufacturer reduced the material quality or what is it? What else? 
Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you for your question. Good question.、Yeah. OK， i l l translate to Mr. Chen， 就是你那个四化当中提到的一个是轻量化嘛？嗯、轻量化当中，他意思是说，你是不是就是说把质量呢去下降？呃，那其实我们说的应该是重量呢去下降，质量不能下降，是不是？那他说在印尼，他就是说有一些车撞到树上了，然后呢、嗯、烧起来了，对，烧起来了，那他们就推理说，这是因为厂家把他的这个车的质量。呃，弄低了，所以车撞到树上都烧起来了。哦这个、我们说的质量是重量，没错，它理解成是品质，嗯、就是两个概念、嗯嗯嗯。对，我们这个讲的是利用的是、呃、刚才提到的是利用的是我们铝合金，后面有个铝合金跟碳纤维等这些新的材料，嗯、铝合金的强度跟刚度，它的这个质量还是能保证的。嗯嗯，是、嗯、它的重量，车厢重量是比原来的这个我们用什么其他钢肯定是重量是下降的。但是它前提是肯定保证安全。原来的这个，就我说的工科上讲的这个强度。Okay, uh, Mr. Chen said that、uh, maybe you may you misunderstood our um concept of lightweight. Just now in the for modernization, we mentioned about the lightweight. Actually, it's to reduce the weight, but not to reduce the quality. Actually, we have to、um, use new resource for the new energy car, like calcium, like carbon, but not to use like、uh, steel, which is very heavy. So in this way, we reduce the weight of new energy car, but not to reduce its quality. So we have to. Um, guarantee its safety, but not to happen any burning, any hurt to the driver. Uh, but ma'am, is that uh not because be uh it is a lightweight, so it means that it can get burned into flames easily. No, no. um, yeah,、mm -hmm. actually, just now I mentioned that、mm -hmm. uh we use new materials like orthium.、Okay. Like carbon, which is much safer than steel. Steel is very heavy, right? Steel is very very heavy. Yeah. So we we are not use steel, but、mm -hmm. we use carbon. We use orthium, like these new materials for the new energy car, which、mm -hmm. is very safe. It can protect us, but not to um get burned easily, not to get hurt easily. Okay. Am、okay. I? Uh, one more questions. Is that、okay. any possible that in future they will use graphene? Is they, because as we know that graphene is more thin, and it is more it is the strongest material in this I think in this world. Yeah, graphene. Um, pardon, I I I don't quite get to what what you mean in in the future. What、mm -hmm. is that possible in future that they will use graphene instead? Of carbon and so on, as you mentioned, because graphene is the slightest and it is the thinnest and the strongest material in the world. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get. I get your question. 就是用呃，未来他说到这个轻能量呃轻量化的话，就是有没有可能用其他的？他刚才提到了一个类似对新材料，对对对。Yeah, surely, surely. 石墨烯等等。对对。Yeah, yeah, surely it very possible that in the future will appear different kinds of new resource for the new energy car. Surely, very possible. Okay. Okay. Okay, that is enough. Thank you for answering. Good afternoon, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Your thank you for Miss Rajesh. And the and the next question we have question from Mr. Abigail Azeda. Is this story? Okay. Thank you for that. Can you hear my voice clearly? Yeah, yeah. Azeda. Okay. Hi. Long、yeah. time no see. Long time no see. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, for all new energy car described earlier, is also have more different for um street energy car. So also, can this affect the performance and durability of the machine of car? Uh, sorry. Can you speak it again and slowly? Okay. Um, for all the energy car you described earlier, and um also have more different for the street energy car. And also, can、um, all of this energy affect the performance and durability of the machine of car? 
我想说的是什么 ？Novita, can you help us to type the question? I'm so sorry. Uh,、okay. you mean the 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 fuel car and the new energy car? The difference between them, right? Ah,、uh, yes. So, uh, what is your question? Okay. Um, about all of that energy is that can affect of performance and durability for the machine. Affect our environment,、yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so for your question. 就是你讲到了这个新能源汽车，那好像跟呃传统的汽那种燃油汽车有很大的不同。嗯。那按你这样说，新能源汽车那是对环境真的没有污染吗？污染很大。嗯，昨天问过这个问题、嗯，昨天也回答过这个问题，他们还问，嗯，这个污染我们是应该从如果从使用来讲，那它是我们说是没有污染。那如果要追溯到源头电能，那我们像我们国内又没电了，也不能说没有了。但是我们现在讲的是它在使我们的，比如说政策上是使用上来讲，嗯 ，So and it's、uh, the developing. A、uh, period for new energy car. So we have to tell from different parts. If we tell from the usage of the new energy car, surely it uh, uh, leaves fewer, few, uh, less、um, emission, less emission to our environment. So we can say it's better than the traditional fuel car. But、uh, about the battery, surely we are still making progress and making development for the battery. Currently, maybe there are some pollution from the battery, but we are still making research to find some a、uh, new、mm, resource to make up the new battery, like hydrogen and some some a、uh, new material like that. Oh. Yeah, in the future, if we can use the new、uh, material to make the battery like hydrogen, maybe the pollution to our environment will be less. Okay. Okay, okay got it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. Good. Okay. Um, I guess no one else asking. Okay, I can. Continue the session for closing, Madam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. If no one want want to ask question, okay. So that's called the end. End. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Thank you. Thanks again for Mister Chen Jia Cheng for oh for their information will be beneficial audience and I hope we can meet again at other event. Thank you. For our audience okay. to join us. Okay. Okay. Hope we can meet again and wish、mm -hmm. all the audience today healthy, luck, and happy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. See you at the next event. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. Thank you. See you、so、at、much. the next. Bye -bye. See okay. See you, you at the next seminar. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank. Yeah.